je m'appelle Gloria Morano, je suis la responsable de la programmation jeune public pour le Luxon City Film Festival et on était très heureuse d'avoir euh, les racines du monde dans notre programme et on est d'autant plus heureuse de pouvoir euh, vous proposer cet échange avec euh, un des producteurs du film, Asgar Frerich, qui est donc ici avec nous depuis Berlin et qui va donc répondre à quelques questions, ce qui vous permettra d'avoir une idée un peu plus globale du projet par rapport au film que vous venez de voir. Donc, Ansgar Freirich, welcome. My pleasure. Thank you for being here with us. Uh, so I'm just uh, asking some questions so the students can have a better idea about the film, about the project. Mm -hmm. And my first question is, so you're the producer of the film, What's the role of a producer? Well, the um, role of the producer uh, has many tasks. So in this case, um, I know Biamba, the directress, for almost 20 years. And I was with her in, in Mongolia like four or five times. So almost a year of my life I already spent it there. And so uh, it started with, with the idea of the Um, the film that uh, Biamba um, told me about the change of Mongolia in the last decades. And uh, this was also something that I witnessed. So you can imagine the first time I was there uh, in Mongolia, it was in the year 2000, I think. If you were hungry on the countryside, you just went to, into a river and you hold your hands like that in the water and the fish would like swim by in the next uh, minute and you just could throw it on the land. There was so much like untouched nature all around. And in 2000, I think it was 2014, the last time I was there, nearly half of the rivers and the lakes uh, in the area where I was were dead. There was nothing in it because um, they found a lot of uh, minerals, especially gold, and they washed it out with cyanide out of the ground. And they just, and cyanide, uh, if you have a drop of cyanide, it really poisons like 100 meters of, of river. So, uh, and they just washed it out and washed the cyanide into the rivers or the lakes, and they died. And by that, um, Of course, the, the water is also the, the fountain for, um, or the, the dwell for, for um, the flock of sheep uh, from the nomads. So this becomes a kind of no, um, domino effect in the region there. And, um, and by the years, the production or the, the, um, The, the industry around the minerals uh, became more and more professional. Though, so they started to lower the, the um, level of water that they can dig deeper. So even the, the dwells uh, for, the, for the herds and for the flocks uh, were dried out. And so, and um, when they want to, to get land, to, to get license, they call someone in, in Ulaanbaatar, in the capital of Mongolia, and give him perhaps some money. Um, and then they have the license for it. And they, then they have to ask the nomads, but they, they tell the nomads, if you leave today, you get $5,000. If you leave tomorrow, you get 4,000 and the day after you get 3,000 and in a week you don't get any money from us. So um, the nomads, which are normally more like single families moving and not like we are here, a community with unions and everything around, they didn't even have the chance together to, to build up um, a lobby for them against these international working companies. And so this, um, this was the first thing that, that was the kind of start for the whole uh, film. And we discussed it and we developed this story together uh, with Jeska Rickels, the co-writer out of it, um, um, to, to also put this message that we want to send out with the film into um, a story about um, how the nomad's life is in our days. 
Um, so that was the part, first part of my uh, producer's work. Uh, and then, of course, together with my colleagues, um, Eva Kemme and, and Tobias Siebert, um, we had to find the money to make a film because it's, it's really a lot of work and a lot of people involved in making a film. This is a quite small film, but even at this film, we were about 70 people working on it. So for this, you have to get money. Um, so you have to apply to fundings and you have to find a TV broadcaster and you have to make contracts with uh, cinema distributions, etc. Uh, and to get the money together that you can say, okay, now we have the money to make the film like we want to have it. And that's the, the second part of, of the producer's work. And the third, of course, the most interested and beautiful in this, especially in this film, was uh, the shooting, where we went together with, I think, 12 people from Europe and Lebanon. The, the, um, the director of photography was from Lebanon. We went there and we met with 50 people from Mongolia and we built, built our own camp with, with this uh, Mongolian uh, nomads yurts. So we all lived like the nomads while shooting. And then, yeah, we had to find uh, the right places. And we as a producer then have to also make the contracts with the actors, with the people that own the places where we uh, want to shoot with all the film team members. And yeah, then we do the shooting and there we every day we have to um, arrange how uh, which car is driving from where to where to bring what uh, to to which point. Um, we have to discuss how we shoot and how we uh, can use the money that we got in to make the perfect film out of it. Sometimes we also have to discuss with the director, even though that she wants to shoot something. Oh, no, it's too expensive we can't afford that uh, so this is all the thing um, and of course to to um, to um, build a team and a spirit on the film that creates uh, the the right uh, foundation or the right basement uh, the ba basis for uh, creating a film like this and then in the aftermath when all the shoot is done. Um, we are here. Uh, I can show you around. Um, this is a mixing studio because I'm not only um, a, a producer, I'm also mixed the sound for the, the film. And uh, then we did the edit. Uh, so the picture, the film edit and the sound design and the color grading. And then finally the, the film is ready. And then my colleague uh, Tobias takes over to find the right festivals for the, f uh, for the film, to find the right partners, to spread the film all over the world. So this is really a job with many facets uh, that you can work in. And yeah, I personally really like to work on the content, on the creative part. And uh, my colleagues are more uh, focused also on the the financial part, etc. So, yeah, but you can find any kind of work in the in the uh, under the name of a producer. Um, you talk about the, the sound mixing. How how was the work on, with the music with the sound? Um, the film also has a very we think a very documentary aspect. Mm -hmm. about uh, traditions and real life in Mongolia. And I have the impression music is a really important part of it. So can you talk us about the music and the sound in this film? Yeah, the first thing I want to ask you as an audience um, is, what do you think? How old is the song that the boy sings? It seems very old, but I think it was written for the film. Yes, I, I just asked the audience now, not you, but you seem <laughs> a little prepared on that. Yeah, actually, um, 
the the song um, is a song that um, there's an old legend uh, in Mongolia that says if the last wean of gold is taken from the earth, the whole earth will fall to dust. Um, and this was something like the guidance for us for the for the whole film. And then we said, okay, then we had the idea, okay, the boy could be someone joining uh, Mongolia Got Talent. And then we said, okay, let's see if there's an old song that describes ex exactly that, this heritage of the nomads uh, to the next generation. Because when we, Normally, when, when you think about nomads, you think about people traveling uh, all the time. And we know in these days, traveling is not good for environment. But the nomads are the ones that are staying. We are the ones that are traveling all over the world. Because the nomads just traveling from one place uh, in spring to exactly the same place um, in summer to exactly the same place in autumn winter and in spring they get back to the first place and when they left their place it takes like two weeks and you don't see anything that there was a human being there so their carbon footprint is the the thing that we always most uh, always aim on that we don't um destroy the in, in environment for the for the next generations so but there wasn't a song like this and so we ask a, a shaman and um, a singer composer but also a shaman um, of mongolia um, to out of this legend to create a song like it was created like uh, 500 years ago and so he went to the countryside and he uh, made rituals for two weeks and throughout these rituals he wrote down the song and the lyrics for the song and even at the premiere some Mongolians said ah oh, I know this song from my grandparents so even the Mongolians thought that that it's a song that was there before uh, but it's actually made for the film yes has the film already been shown in Mongolia or is it planned to be shot? Yeah, yeah. This is the tragic of, of these days. Uh, we had a date of premiere at, I think, 12th of December. But on the 11th of December, everything was prepared. The red carpet was uh, there, everything. But on the 11th of December, they decided a lockdown. So. They had to quit the premiere there and they will redo it um, now uh, in this year as soon as uh, Corona gets a bit lower. Um, but um, the, the Academy, um, uh, the, the, the Oscars decided to take um, our film as the application from Mongolia for this year, which makes us very proud. Of the film. Um, I wanted to ask you about the film setting again. again. Um, so is the, was the film shot in a real Mongolian mine? Or was it following the evolution of the extractions? Yeah, this was also a very tragic story in, at the shooting because um, we had um, a main location, you call it, so where the yurt is. And we had a beautiful ride at, at a river side. We had a main location like that. And uh, literally three days before shooting, um, a New Zealand land, uh, mine, mining corporation next to it bought the whole land to prohibit us the shooting. So three days before start of shooting, we lost our main location. And then we searched um, at territories which haven't been sold to mines yet. And we find the even more beautiful location where the, where the yurt is now on, which belonged to 
uh, to a nomad. And then we went to the nomad uh, to ask him. And in Mongolia, it's if you go somewhere to ask something, you don't go there and say, I want to have this and here's the money and then you get it. You have to bring time. So we went in there and um, we we introduced ourselves and the, uh, the nomad began to first tell his story. And the story of him was had so much in parallel to the fictional story that we've written because he said like the minds are coming closer every day and uh, all the nomads around already took the money and they went off even though that they lost their heritage land but i will stay here and i will even if they drill two meters away from my yurt, I will not sacrifice my land and I will not go out. And then we asked him, uh, then we told him about the film and about the content. And if we asked him if we can shoot there. And he said, like, you're really, it feels like you're sent here by something higher to tell my story and tell the story of so many nomads around me um, to the public. And he was very, like, of course, he gave us the land right away to, to shoot. And yeah, we, we still have a good contact to him. And he's still there. I, I think. thank you very much <laughs> for your answers. Thank you very much for your participation. I think the students are now really happy to have discovered all these details about the production and the story of the film. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, thank you. And yeah, also to you uh, listening to it. I think the, the, the film is a symbol for it that everyone, it doesn't uh, count how old you are, everyone can reach something. And it's, uh, this is the start. And it's so sad that the Fridays for Future um, uh, movement is so much covered now by the coronavirus. But when this pandemic is over, you have to continue. We all have to continue for that. And yeah, if you like the film, tell every, everyone, tell your teacher, perhaps uh, that you can show it there to discuss. Uh, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. And thanks for the nice talk. Bye.